Hello fellow sim racers. Today's video covers a whole host of smaller topics that didn't really warrant their own video, but I still wanted to talk about them anyway. So consider today's video a bit of an experiment in format. I'm gonna be talking about drone cameras for Assetto Corsa. Something shiny from BMW and Fanatec, or Fanatec and BMW, or B BMW, t you get the idea. A website a mate of mine made, and shockingly for this channel, Assetto Corsa Competizione. Before we get into the main topics, there are a couple of announcements that have been grabbing people's attention. First up, there's this collaboration between Delara and iRacing, which has caused no controversy whatsoever. Then there's the new BMW M4 GT3, also for iRacing, which is less divisive because, if we're honest with ourselves, GT3 is sim racing's equivalent to chemical dependency. But the announcement did come with a side order of this. I don't really do product preview videos on the channel, firstly because honestly they're quite boring, and secondly because I like to spend quite a lot of time with the product before I talk about it publicly. But this collaboration between Fanatec and BMW to produce a wheel for both the real M4 GT3 and sim racers is a little bit different. And of course Fanatec were very keen to point out that this is no replica. Of course, any wheel that's designed to work in both the real car and on a sim rig is going to be incredibly high specification. It's, it's all carbon, it's got magnetic push-pull shifters, which I think is a first for Fanatec. It's got Hall Effect rotary encoders, and it's dust and water resistant and all of that good stuff. But while we do know a fair amount about the wheel itself, there are a number of important questions that are left unanswered. First of all, to work with a real-world car, it needs an FIA-approved quick release, which clearly isn't going to be compatible with Fanatec's current offering. Their answer is this newly engineered QR2 quick release, but that just raises questions about compatibility with the rest of Fanatec's ecosystem. In fact, we've only seen pictures of it working currently on the Podium direct drive wheelbases. And then there's the elephant in the room, or hopefully not elephant in the room, of the price. As a motorsport grade product, many people are justifiably concerned that this is going to command motorsport grade prices. But let's remember that Fanatec are a mass market manufacturer, and part of the reason motorsport equipment costs so much is the very small user base. They're not in the business of making small batches for bespoke applications, so I would be incredibly surprised if this was as expensive as a real world GT3 rim. If I'm going to make a mix and match magazine style video, then I think it's a safe bet that I'm going to include an Assetto Corsa mod. Although in this case, this one may be of limited interest, but do bear with me here because I think even if you so much as make a screenshot in Assetto Corsa, you'll find some use for this. Now, the default camera tools in vanilla Assetto Corsa are, are actually pretty good, and they're further improved by the now hilariously named shaders patch. But the drone camera by Suka 1427 adds important functionality like on-the-fly depth of field and field of view adjustment, key and stick remapping, and the biggie here is that it allows vehicle tracking, which is something that's just not available in Veneto Assetto Corsa. As many of you will know, I get extremely passionate about the camera controls in racing sims because I use them all the time for this whole content creation thing. And as far as camera tools go, this one is as close to perfect as I've found. As you would expect, it's available from Race Department, and I'll put a link in the video description. In fact, it's already been out a couple of months, but it was released the same week that I moved into this studio, and that's my excuse for not featuring it sooner. Next up is a website from my mate Steve, whose work you'll have seen absolutely everywhere, but you might not know him by name. He's worked on a load of projects for Race Department, SRO, he films a lot of Jimmy's videos when he goes out into the real world and leaves the shed, and one day we'll probably get our asses in gear and collaborate ourselves. Simply put, the new site is dedicated to finding mods, which at the moment are disparately located all over the internet. So to use an overly British analogy, it's kind of like an Argos catalogue for community content. At the moment, the site focuses on paid mods by the various modding groups and Steam Workshop content for R Factor 2, but I think there's a lot of potential to grow into other areas. And if I'm honest with you, I was surprised by just how many mods I'd missed out on because of the sort of siloed nature of the paid modding community, bad search engines on sites, and the genuinely awful experience of trying to browse through mods in the Steam Workshop. 
Anyway, do give the site a look. I've put a link in the video description as you would expect. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of potential for this already useful resource to expand and become something even more useful to the community. So if you've got any ideas for Steve, then leave a comment below. Finally, I'd like to round out the video by talking about the new AI for Assetto Corsa Competizione. Now, I wasn't able to talk about this in the GT World Challenge preview pack as I hadn't actually had an opportunity to play with the new AI because it wasn't included in our preview build. But I've since spent quite a lot of time with it as someone who uses the AI extensively for content creation here on YouTube. First thing to note is that the pesky throttle lifting is gone, which makes the AI more raceable at various different settings. And then there's the new attack and defense mechanisms, which just makes the AI a bit better at racing. Honestly, it's not revolutionary stuff, but it takes AI that I would describe as workable before and makes them much more racy now. And that's often something that's really tricky to implement. Race Room is often credited with having some of the raciest AI in the sim racing sphere, and I certainly subscribe to that theory. But the cars when they attack can be very, very aggressive to the point where you have to be prepared to just sort of jump out of the way, which is not unlike the online open lobby experience. While something like iRacing, on the other hand, has this diverse series of AI profiles, which gives you a different experience depending on the car you're passing, which is very immersive. And it's those two titles that have my favorite AI implementations in the sim racing sphere. And I think ACC has now joined the conversation. So guys, that just about brings us to the end of this experiment in format. Can you let me know in the comments what worked, what didn't work, and whether I should you know, just delete the channel entirely? As usual, if you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe, all of that stuff. And I guess all that's left to say is goodbye. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.